Well, hello again, again, again. Thanks for joining me for another session and another study in the Word of God. I thank the Lord for this another day, another time that we can meet together around the table of the Word of God. Folks, let me tell you something. This is the best restaurant you can ever be in. Amen. Hallelujah. You're in the best restaurant you can ever go to right now as we sit around the Word of God and we feed from the meat and the bread and the milk of the Word of God. We thank the Lord for it because it's the, it's the resource that strengthens our spirit, man, our soul, and our body. Why? Because the Word of God tells us how to eat right. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I'm a stickler on eating properly. Amen. And, and good health. And I thank the Lord for that because that's a, that's godly also. Taking care of your body, taking care of your health is very godly. Amen. Amen. Because that's what God wants us to do. We are the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, so we must take care of these bodies. So we thank the Lord for you tonight. We give God praise again tonight as we're going to continue our teaching concerning prayers that unlock the portals. Prayers that unlock the portals. We uh, In our first session, we looked at the life of Daniel. And we could, we could refer to this as our lesson two on prayers that unlock the portals. Uh, and tonight, and when we go into the teaching, we're going we're gonna to use for a subject tonight the prayers that bring the fire. Prayers that brings the fire. We're talking about the fire of God tonight and the type of prayer that will bring the fire of God down. What must be in our personal lives in order for the fire of the Holy Spirit to manifest in our lives and in the lives of other, other people. And that, and that means unlocking the portals of fire, unlocking the portals of fire that the fire of God will fall into our lives and into the earth and into the lives of other people with and through our prayers. Amen. So let's pray and let's believe God for the seraphims tonight. That the seraphims will come tonight and they will bring the fire of God into us on a new and a new and a better level. And we be more like Jesus to purify us, to cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now. For ordaining this time we thank you right now father for the very subject god because even you give us the subject father we thank you for that now and father i pray as i teach tonight as i minister this tonight and regardless of when they hear it whether it's morning noon or night god that the fire of the holy spirit will be kindled in the lives and in the hearts of people father because you god you said your word is like as fire and father we pray right now that that consuming fire of the holy spirit be released as i speak tonight through the spoken word god we give you praise we give you glory we serve notice and we serve when we declare an attack on the kingdom of darkness tonight yes we attack sickness we attack disease we attack fear we attack depression suicide we attack the works of the dark of darkness tonight with the word of fire tonight and god that you be glorified set your people free set many captives free from bondages from habits from addictions tonight from wrong lifestyles tonight through the fire of your spoken word. And Lord, you be glorified. You get all the credit, honor, and praise. I claim a harvest through the spoken word tonight. In Jesus' name, come on, say amen. Say amen again and again. So we thank the Lord for you tonight. Thank God that you taking this time to spend this time with us in the word tonight. And we believe tonight that it's going to bless you, it's going to benefit you. So just be open, have your pencil, your pad, your pens, your highlighters, get your writing equipment uh, in, in place, and let's take some notes, let's write some things down, amen, because whenever I want to retain something, I want the Holy Ghost to bring something back to me, I write it down, amen. Why? Because he promises to bring back to our remembrance the things that he said to us. So we encourage you to be obedient, to take some notes. Amen. Because our, our mind and our brain is not that good that we can maintain and retain all this information. Amen. But it's the Holy Spirit. So tonight we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at uh, a, a couple of individuals. I believe we'll look at we're gonna look at Solomon. Then we're gonna look at the prophet Elijah. Then if the Holy Spirit leads us, we'll go into the book of Acts and go into Acts chapter 2 and look at those early disciples. Why these three? Because these are three that prayed and God sent fire from heaven. God sent the fire of his presence from heaven because of their prayer. And Jesus said something in Luke chapter 12. I, I didn't intend to go there. Now we're going to come back to 2 Chronicles in just a little bit. But I want, to, I want to go to Luke chapter 12 tonight. And let's look at a statement from the Lord Jesus Christ. Something that Jesus said that don't get preached, don't get taught too much. But I thank God that this is a part of the apostles doctrine. 
Amen. Because Jesus is the apostle that, that gave us this teaching. In Luke chapter 12, and it's in verse number 49. Luke 12, 49. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened until it's accomplished? Okay, so now what Jesus was saying, a lot of people, I don't, you don't hear too many preachers preach this. You won't hear this taught too much. But I want you to know this too is a part of the apostles' doctrine. Because the apostles' doctrine is everything that Jesus taught. Because he is the, he is the apostle that gave us the doctrine. Not me, not you, and not any other person who would be called to be an apostle. The, uh, the apostles' doctrine is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's don't get no big head around here and think that we got any doctrine to teach people and to build them up and to bring them to maturity. It's the doctrine of what Jesus taught. That's the apostles' doctrine of Acts 2.42. The Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine in the breaking of bread and of prayer. But what they continued steadfast in was what Jesus taught them is the apostles' doctrine. So we must stay with the apostles' doctrine. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're going to stay mature, if you're going to grow to maturity, fulfill God's purpose for your life, get the revelation, the wisdom, the understanding that we need in this hour. Hallelujah. We need the apostles doctrine. Hallelujah. And my heart goes out to all these people that walk away from the apostles doctrine, man. I'm telling you, you're walking out, you're walking off into the dark. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's going to be glorified for those who return and who those who connect and reconnect with the apostles doctrine. Look at what Jesus said here. He said in verse 49, Luke 12, 49, he said, I am come to send fire on the earth. What will I if it be already kindled? In other words, Jesus said, I, my, one of my main purposes for coming is to bring the fire of God to the earth. He came to send fire on the earth. When did he do it? He did it when he set the Holy Ghost and fire in that upper room. That was the fire that he was talking about. He was talking about the fire of the baptism of the Holy Ghost for power upon the church and that fire that would destroy the works of the devil. He said, what will I if it be already kindled? In other words, Jesus said, hey, uh, man, Jesus was really saying this. He said, I wish it was already here. He said, because this world needed it years ago. He said, I wish it was already kindled. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I want you to know it's already been kindled. Glory to God. The fire is already burning. Hallelujah. Because hallelujah, I'm, I'm burning before you here tonight. Glory to God. With the fire of the Holy Ghost. Because the fire is already kindled in me. Glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. But he said here, look at verse 50. He said, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. Now, what was he talking about? He had already been baptized by John the Baptist. So what baptism was he talking about? He was talking about the baptism of his suffering. He was talking about the baptism of death. In other words, that he would go into death. He would be submerged into death, but he would come out victorious. He said, I have a baptism to be baptized with. He said, and how am I straightened until it's accomplished? In other words, he said, I'm not perfected until I, until I suffer and die on that cross. Really, that's what he was saying. I'm not complete until I pay the sin debt by dying on that cross. But what I want you to see, Jesus prophesied. He said, I've come to send fire on the earth. Glory to God. I want you to know Jesus has already set fire on the earth. And he wants us to be carriers and imparters of the fire that he sent on the earth, which is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now, 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 now let's go with me. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He said, now go to Acts chapter 2. I'm headed to Acts chapter 2. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Because we're talking about prayers that bring the fire. We're talking about prayers that bring the fire. God wants you to pray prayers that will bring fire. And what I want us to see tonight, that the things that must be in our lives so that we can pray prayers that will bring the fire of God. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost 
and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Now, Jesus made those disciples a promise. He said, I will go, but, the, but I will send you another comforter who will abide with you forever. He said that in John chapter 14. Now, what Jesus was talking about, he was talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit who would come as fire upon the earth and upon his disciples. So what he prophesied in Luke 12, he fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. But the things that I want to focus on tonight is the position that we must pray from in order for our prayers to bring fire back to the earth, to bring fire down on our situation, to bring fire down on, on the enemy, to bring the fire of judgment upon sickness, upon racism, upon, upon gun violence, upon all of this stuff that the enemy has brought into the earth. The only answer to it is the prayers of the righteous that bring the fire of God. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost gonna teach us tonight what we must have in our life in order to pray prayers that brings the fire of God. Why? Because the Bible says in, in, in Hebrews 12, 29, Hebrews 12, 29, our God is a consuming fire. So we need God on the earth. Glory to God. So how do we bring him? By praying prayers that will bring the fire of God. Why? Because God is fire. Did you know that God is fire? Glory to God. The Bible says in Ezekiel, he's fire from the loins up and fire from the loins down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel saw him as a man on fire. And he wants to send that fire through our prayers. Okay. So the, the church, I want to say that the disciples were instructed to go and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until the fire came, until they be in due with power from on high. Jesus told them that when he was on the Mount of Olives in Luke chapter 12, when he ascended, uh, Luke, chapter, Luke, Luke, chapter, Luke chapter 24 at verse 49, and Acts chapter 1 by verses 11 and 12. When Jesus ascended, he promised, he said, tarry till you be endued with power from on high. And it was the power of the Holy Ghost. So what the disciples had to have, they had to have willingness. They had to have expectation. They had to have obedience to instruction, obedience to prayer and fasting. They had to have obedience to the words of Jesus. And they had to be led by the Spirit of God. You see, because folks, when we got these things in our life, we got obedience to prayer. We got obedience to the instruction we get from the Word. Hallelujah. We got an expectation. Hallelujah. When I pray, I expect the fire of God to come. Hallelujah. I expect, I believe it will come. They had to have faith in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because they had that faith and they were unified, they followed God's instruction. They came together in that upper room in one accord. In one accord. That's what Acts chapter 1 and verse, Acts chapter 2 verse 1 said. They were in one accord in one place. Unity. I say unity. When we are in unity vertically with God and we are in unity horizontal with one another, we can pray prayers that will bring the fire of God, that will open the portals of heaven and those seraphims of fire will come into the earth. Can you say amen? They were unified. They were obedient. They were consistent. They were persistent. Amen. They persisted in prayer until the fire of God came. They pushed. They P-U-S-H, they prayed until something happened. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to pray until something happens. Hallelujah. Keep pushing in prayer. Push through the opposition. Push through the, 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 the attacks of the enemy. And push, when we push through in prayer, it gives us that persistence, that consistency that God will honor by setting fire on our prayer. The, the Bible says they were in one accord in one place and suddenly, and suddenly, because they were in agreement, because they believe God, because they expect it. You see, we got to pray with an expectation, folks. And you see, a lot of people don't pray because they don't expect nothing. Amen? Why? Because they don't have the capabilities or the characteristics in their lives that will cause God to respond to their prayer. Amen? And you see, we've got to know, you got to know that God will hear you when you call. Amen? Hallelujah. Didn't he say that in Psalms 20? He said, let the king hear me when I call. I believe the king will hear us when, when we call. But we got to have an expectation. You see, because a lot of people come to church with no expectation of a move of God. They come to church expecting church to be as usual as it was the Sunday before because, because the Sunday before they can dictate what's going to happen the next Sunday because the Holy Ghost is not in charge. We got to have an expectation, God, that you're going to do something different. You're going to do something new. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why? Because he's the God of the new thing. 
but he wants to work through people who will pray with certain capabilities, certain characteristics in their lives, and he'll send fire from heaven, as he did on the day of Pentecost. The Bible said there, there was a suddenly there was a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongue like as of fire, sat upon each one of them. All 120 was baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, but it was their prayers that brought the fire. I said it was their prayers that brought the fire. Prayer today still can bring the fire. I said prayer today still can bring the fire through the portal that attached to and, and, and we access the open heaven, okay? So we say they were unified, they were obedient to the instruction, they were obedient to fasting and prayer, they were consistent. And folks, if we have these characteristics, we too will bring, will cause our, our prayers, will bring the fire of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament and let's look at a couple other examples of, of, of men who prayed prayers and God sent fire from heaven. We're talking about prayers that will bring the fire. Don't you want your prayer to bring the fire tonight? Hallelujah. Don't you want your prayer? You'll be able to pray and you see a response. Hallelujah. You'll pray and God will send those light portals. God will send those light shafts into the room. God will send those portals of glory as a result of your prayer. That's the prayer the prayers I want to pray. That's the kind of prayers we're going to pray. Amen. Prayers that will bring the fire of God. That will open the portals to access this open heaven. Because we need the, the portals of healing. We need the portals of deliverance. The portals of, of, of financial prosperity to be open to us. But it's going to take the prayers of the righteous. That's going to avail much. Okay? So now let's look at Solomon. Uh, I'm, I'm at 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles 7. Come on, somebody tell him thank you tonight. Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you. Now we're going to be praying prayers that's going to bring the fire of God. Let's look at Solomon. The Bible says in 7 1, 2 Chronicles 7 1. And when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven. When Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven. The fire came down from heaven. In other words, Solomon's prayers opened the portals of fire that caused fire to come into the earth. He developed and established an access point for the fire of God because his fire, his prayer brought the fire of God. He said, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the, and the glory of the Lord filled the house and the priest could not enter the house, enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the, the Lord's house. Solomon prayed prayers that caused the fire of God to fall. Solomon had some things operating in him that I want to share with you that I believe that caused God to respond to Solomon's prayer. The Bible says here in verse 2, 2 Chronicles 7, 2, And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord, because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And the children, and when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, they saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord upon the house of they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worship and praise the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. In other words, Solomon's prayer got a response from the third heaven and God responded by sending fire. One of the reasons God responded to Solomon's prayer was because God had directed Solomon to build the tabernacle build the house of God, physically build the house of God. And Solomon followed God's building blueprint to the exact detail of how God wanted the tabernacle built. Solomon built according to the plan of God. God was pleased with the structure. He was pleased with Solomon's efforts. He was pleased with Solomon's obedience to his instructions because Solomon built it the way God wanted the tabernacle built. Folks, I want you to know when we are obedient to build the way God wants us to build his house, God will set fire when we pray. I said God will set fire when we pray. He had made an end of praying. The Bible says, and fire came down from heaven, verse 1, and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. 
That's what we want, folks, because when the fire comes, the glory comes. I said, where the fire is, the glory is. We want the glory of the Lord to fill the house. Hallelujah. But it's going to take prayers that will bring the fire. Solomon's prayers was accompanied by the fire of God because Solomon built according to God's plan and God's blueprint. My friend, we are called to build. You are called to build. And the question is, how are you building? How are you building your temple? How are you building your life in order to be pleasing to God? You see, because we all are builders. We all have a temple to build. Now, no, no, no. I was just talking about not just building the church, corporately building the church. Individually, we are builders. Amen. Apostolic people are builders. In other words, you are first the builder of your own life. And, and we have to, we must build according to God's plan and God's blueprint. Now, Solomon built the tabernacle according to God's plan. He put the stones in place. He put everything in the tabernacle that God told him because he followed God's instruction. We have an assignment to build God's temple in our personal life. My question is, how you build it? How are you following God's instruction? Or are you following God's instruction? You see, because most, most of the church or most believers are not building according to God's plan. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 21, that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So if we're going to build our personal life, we got to build according to Ephesians 2, 19 through 21, according to uh, on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Apostles and prophets must be in our building process. Amen. Otherwise, otherwise, we must be apostolically connected to a true apostle. We must be apostolically connected to true apostles and other fivefold ministers. Now, if you are in a denominational, traditional church that only uh, uh, looks to the, the leaders as the pastors or the bishops, that's not true apostolic building. And you're not building properly. And your prayers will not bring fire. Glory to God. But when you build on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, you gotta you can pray, believe in, and expect it. And God will answer you by fire. God will answer your prayers by sending something supernatural that will occur as a result of your prayer. But we've got to build properly. We've got to we gotta build with the apostles' doctrine. We gotta build with, with the obedience of God. We gotta build in unity with God. We gotta build in unity with each other. And we've got to build with faith, believing that God will cause our house to be strong and we will be the temple of God that God will set his approval on by sending first fire upon our lives, destroy the works of darkness in us, then we can pray and God will send fire on the lives of others. Solomon built according to God's plan. Again, I ask you tonight, how are you building? How are you building? Are you building on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ as the leader? Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. And you must do it with obedience to God. You must do it in submission to God. You must do it, you must build in faith. And God will send fire when we pray. I said God will send fire when we pray. Now let's look at another example. Hallelujah. Let's look at the prophet Elijah. Let's look at the prophet Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 18. And let's look at, I'm going to share with you some of the characteristics in Elijah's life that caused God to send fire when Elijah prayed. I'm talking about prophets of fire. Prophets can pray. Prophets that will pray and God will send fire. Hear this tonight, prophets. God's going to call you. God has called you to be a prophet of fire. Glory to God. Just like the prophet Elijah. Okay? Now, many of you know the story. If you don't know the story, you're not a Bible student like most of us. Uh, there was a situation in, 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 in 1 Kings chapter 18 where Elijah and the prophets of Baal had an encounter. In other words, they had a confrontation on who would be the true God. And they, they made an agreement that the God who could answer by fire would be the true God. So, so the prophets of Baal, which were 850, and the prophet of Elijah, who was, who was single by himself, made an agreement with those Baal prophets that the God who answered by fire, he would be declared the true God. And the other God would be declared the false god and the prophets of the false god would be destroyed. So Elijah put himself in a life and death situation here. But Elijah had faith. Hallelujah. He had faith. He trusted God 
that God would answer him by sending fire when he prayed. And well, as we're going to see when we read the scriptures, that the, the prophets of Baal failed in their prayer or in their all that they did by jumping on the altar and cutting themselves with stone. Nothing they did caused Baal to send fire from heaven because Baal could not do it. Fault, the false God couldn't do it. But the true God of heaven and earth is the God who answered by fire. Glory to God. And he will answer you, my sister. He will answer you, my brother, because I'm, you're going to learn tonight how to pray prayers that will open the portals of heaven that will bring the fire of God into your personal life, on your finances, on your health, on your walk with the Lord, on your calling, on your ministry assignment, and on sickness, disease, or any negative poverty, whatever it is that the enemy has brought into your life, the fire of God's going to burn it up. Oh, 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 oh glory to God. Okay. At, uh, First Kings chapter 18, I'll start with verse 36. It says, And it came to pass at the time of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, that I am thy servant and have done all these things at thy word. Now Elijah had built an altar. Elijah had put sacrifice on the altar. He had poured water around the altar. He had put stones around the sacrifice. Hallelujah. And now the altar was there. Now, Baal, the prophets of Baal, they, they jumped up on the altar. And they cried and cut themselves with stone. Cry out to Baal, oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. And there was no answer. So Elijah kicked back out. Elijah said, cry a little louder, fellas. Maybe he's on a vacation. Or maybe he's in the bathroom. Or maybe he's sleeping. I mean, Elijah just made fun of him. Why? Because Elijah knew that Baal would not and could not answer. Let me tell you something. These folks who serve false idols, serve false God, follow in false religion, you're serving a God that can't respond. You're serving a God that will not answer you. Glory to God. But thank God for the true and living God. And the true and living God comes with this apostolic movement. Glory to God. Thank God for the apostolic. Okay. So Elijah was a type of the apostolic. Okay. And, and, and now, now it's Elijah's turn. It's Elijah's turn. The Baal, the Baal prophets had their opportunity to cry out to Baal, but and they got no answer. Now in verse 36, Elijah, he prays at the time of the evening sacrifice. Glory to God. There's something about that evening prayer. There's something about that midnight prayer calls. There's something about that evening sacrifice that will bring the fire of God down on the, the works of the enemy. He says, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and have done all these things at thy word. In other words, Elijah said, God, let it be known today that I'm your servant, and I followed your instructions. See, one of the characteristics is that Elijah had, he followed God's instructions. He followed God's instructions. You see, we got to follow God's instructions, folks, that we're going to pray prayers that will bring the fire of God. He, and he says in verse 37, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou has turned their heart back again. Verse 38 says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when the people saw it, they fell upon their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is the God. In other words, other words, He is the God who answers by fire. And He is the true and living God that we all must pray to and we all must serve. It's not Buddha. It's not Muhammad. It's not any other. But it's the Lord Jesus Christ. God Almighty is the God of heaven and earth that we must pray to and we must serve in this time. Okay, so, so uh, God sent fire on Elijah's prayer and on that sacrifice, on those sacrifices, on the stones, licked up the water that was in the trench, glory to God, hallelujah, and can you imagine fire that would burn up rock, glory to God, fire that burn up the stones, now that must be some kind of hot fire, but that was the fire that came from heaven because Elijah prayed. Now, what did Elijah have in his life? Elijah had obedience operating. 
Elijah had submission operating. Elijah had faith operating. Elijah had expectation operating. In other words, see, when we pray, we got to expect. Hallelujah. I, I expect God to answer. I expect God to respond when I pray. Amen. We got to have that expectation. Hallelujah. Because when we have these things, God will answer us by fire. We got to have submission to God. We got to have humility. Hallelujah. Humility means fasting. Amen. And Elijah had these things operating in his life. And another thing that Elijah had operating, Elijah was faithful to declaring the word of God. Whenever God wanted Elijah to speak, thus saith the Lord, Elijah was willing to faithfully declare the word of God. Are you faithful to declare the word of God with every opportunity? Amen. But because, because of that, God honored him, God respected him, and as a result of that, God sent fire on that sacrifice on Mount Carmel. And the results was Elijah's prayer proved that God was the true God because God sent fire upon the sacrifice after Elijah prayed. After Elijah prayed. And, and, and not only did he send fire, God sent rain because Elijah was obedient to prayer. Let's look at uh let's look at verse 40, uh, verse 41. First Kings 18, 41. Not only did God send fire for Elijah, he sent rain that meant the prosperity had come, that the famine and the drought was over. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm talking about uh, prayers that will bring fire and rain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We need to pray prayers that bring fire and rain. The fire represents the presence of God, the power of God. The rain represents the prosperity of God. Financial prosperity, spiritual prosperity, prosperity in every realm comes when we pray. For we must be in right standing with God. Hallelujah. And God will answer us with fire and rain as he answered Elijah. And he says here, uh, verse 41, And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat, drink, for there's a sound of an abundance of rain. You see, God sent the rain after the fire. After the fire came to destroy the works of the enemy, prosperity comes. Hallelujah. See, because sometimes we got to destroy some things before prosperity could come. Elijah's prayer destroyed the, the sacrifice, the altar, as well as the prophets of Baal. Amen. Destroy the works of the enemy and destroy their enemy, his enemy. And after that destruction of the works of the enemy took place, then God could send the prosperity. See, that's why a lot of times, folks, we got to shut the evil gates before God can prosper us. We got to close off those gates of, 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 of fear and, and, and of uncleanness and, and of disobedience and unforgiveness. We got to close those gates and worry and all this stuff. Close those gates. Then God can send prosperity. See, Elijah was first, he, he first destroyed some things. Glory to God. Then God prospered him. God prospered the people of Samaria because he sent rain on Elijah's prayer. He told Ahab, get thee up, eat, drink, for there's a sound. Uh, uh, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Glory to God. And I want you to tell you tonight, Harvest Center, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain, abundance of blessing, abundance of outpouring is coming because of our prayer. And God's going to be glorified. Bible says, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elisha went up to the top of Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. In other words, the posture of prayer, of bowing, kneeling before the Lord, put his face between his knees. In other words, he bowed before the Lord in an act of worship. Hallelujah. When we see prayer as worship, when we come to know that prayer is the first act of true worship, hallelujah, that I'm worshiping God with prayer when I'm on my knees and God's going to respond. God's going to answer by fire and he's going to answer by rain following. Okay. He said, put his head between his knees and said to his servant, go up, look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he said, there is nothing. He said, go up again seven times. In other words, he said, go back and keep going back until you went back seven times. And the Bible says, and it came to pass, verse 44, at the seventh time, he said, uh, uh, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. In other words, God told, ah God told that servant to tell Ahab, He better get moving, because the rain's coming. He said, well, You better get moving, because the rain's coming. Because and if you don't get moving, the rain will stop you. He said, Don't let the rain stop you. I said, Don't let the rain stop you. And, and take this as an admonition. When you start to prosper, don't let the prosperity stop you from serving God. 
Hallelujah. You hear that again? Here it comes again. When you start to prosper, when God starts to send that abundant life, don't let that abundant life hinder you from serving God. Don't let the rain stop you tonight, my friend. Okay? Just like uh, Elijah said uh, to Ahab. The Bible says in the, uh, uh, verse 45. Yeah, verse 45. Okay? He said, it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens were black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. In other words, Ahab jumped in that chariot, man. He goaded those horses, man, and he was he was making it to Jezreel. He was making it to Jezreel. Why? Because the rain was coming. I said the rain was coming. I said the rain was coming. He said, as ye the Lord reigned in the time of the latter rain. And folks, I, de I declare tonight that the rain is coming. The rain is coming on your health. The rain is coming on your finances. The rain is coming on your family. The rain is coming on your situation. Hallelujah. The rain is coming. I said the rain is coming. I said the rain is coming. Hallelujah. And God's going to prosper us beyond what we can even imagine. But I want you to, I'm going to close with verse 40, 46. He said, and, and the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. In other words, Elijah outran Ahab's chariot and outran the horses. Hallelujah. Can you have, can you imagine a man outrun a horse? Glory to God. But God gave him supernatural strength, supernatural power. Why? Because Elijah prayed prayers that brought down the fire and it brought down the rain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God empowered Elijah to carry out his assignment to do the supernatural. Hallelujah. Folks, get ready. We're about to do the supernatural. Because God's going to hear our prayer. He's going to send angels to assist us. Like those angels that are here with me right now. Glory to God. How did those shit? Those seraphims of fire are here with me right now. And I release them into your situation. I release them into your circumstance. I release them into your health tonight. To burn up and destroy the works of the enemy. And I declare the reign of God upon your circumstance and your situation. To prosper you in your finances, in your health, in your mind in your body, in your family, in your marriage, and in everything that concerns you. I declare the reign of God. Glory to God upon you. But Elijah was one who was faithful to speaking the word of God. Elijah was faithful. He was humble. He was consistent to prayer. Hallelujah. He was obedient to God. Hallelujah. And, and I'm, going, I'm headed to the book of James now. The book of James right now that talked about this man Elijah and his prayer life and how God used him to bring fire and rain down on the earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the for the life of Elijah, his example. And God's, God's going to be glorified through us who follow these examples. And, and, I, and I'll pick it up here with verse number 16. James 5, 16. Talking about Elijah. He says, Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, now here's he talking about Elijah now. James 5, 16 really re is referring to Elijah. It says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman avails much. So our prayer must be fervent. Hallelujah. Fervent. You know what fervent means? Hot. Hallelujah. God wants us to pray hot prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm talking about some hot prayer tonight. Hallelujah. How about you getting hold of some hot prayer tonight? Hallelujah. How about you praying some hot prayers tonight? Amen. So he said the effectual fervent prayer. I mean prayer that's all fire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, that's what I mean. I'm talking about letting that fire burn on your altar every morning. And never let that fire go out. Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning with prayer. Glory to God. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Notice Elijah was declared to be righteous before God. Why? Because Elijah believed in his God. He believed God because it was declared unto him for righteousness. See, right standing with God is prayer that brings fire. Righteousness does not come by doing good. Righteousness not, not, does not come by doing good works. But righteousness comes by faith in the living God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The, 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 the Amplified Bible say is dynamic in its working. And it releases and avails much power. But it comes from a heart that's righteous, hands that are clean before God. Hallelujah. People that are blameless, just like Daniel. 
Oh, glory to God. People that are found innocent. And hallelujah. This is where this, these characteristics was also in the life of Elijah. And as a result of that, God declared him righteous. He said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, it produces much. Don't you want your prayer to produce much? And the reason a lot of people don't pray because they don't think their prayer can produce much. But what, what we're teaching you tonight is how your prayer can produce much. Because the fire of God, hallelujah, when it comes through prayer, it'll produce much. It'll produce much damage against the works of sickness, disease, hallelujah, poverty, and uh, uh, the Lord showed me that word, disease. Disease is disease. Hallelujah. I declare disease to leave you. Pain is disease. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Soreness is disease. I come against disease in your body tonight. In the name of Jesus, all disease leave now. Hallelujah. Joint pain, go. In the name of Jesus. Eye pain, go. In the name of Jesus. Back pain, go. In the name of Jesus. Stomach pain, go. In the name of Jesus. Head pain, go. In the name of Jesus. And by his stripes, you are healed. And may the fire of God burn up all dis-ease in your body. In Jesus' name. Come on, you just need to say, I receive my healing. I, come on, need to say, I receive my healing. Come on, say it again. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. Somebody need to put it in the chat. I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because fire destroys dis-ease. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Okay, so we're back to Elijah here. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for the space of three years and six months. Talking about Elijah, Elijah of the Old Testament in the first Kings 18. And the Bible says, and he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. In other words, he prayed that it wouldn't rain because Elijah told Ahab, God will not send rain except it be by my word. In other words, Elijah, uh, uh, Elijah told Ahab, it's not going to rain till I say so. Glory to God. God's not going to send rain until I pray. And boy, you know, and that's why Elijah, uh, Ahab called Elijah, called, told Elijah, you old troubler of Israel. Uh, you, what you doing here, old troubler of Israel? Hallelujah. See, because, see, because the devil's camp will always call us troublemakers. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you, we are troublemakers to the enemy's camp. Glory to God. We're going back to the enemy's camp, and we're going to take back what he stole for us because we're putting him under our feet in Jesus' name. Yes, we're troublemakers. I'm a troublemaker. Yes, God, for the devil and his demons and for the works of darkness. You are a trouble. You were called to be a troublemaker. That's what Ahab, at 1 Kings 17, Ahab said, you old troublemaker. That's what he told Elijah because he, he was saying Elijah caused trouble because Elijah prayed that it wouldn't be no rain for three and a half years. And the Bible says, and it wasn't. Why? Because God honored Elijah's prayer. In other words, God afflicted a punishment upon the people because they disobeyed God by causing the famine. Hallelujah. And glory to God. Hallelujah. And I believe this famine of, of health and, and prosperity came through this coronavirus because of the wickedness of people, because of the, uh, the unbelief of the church. I believe God has allowed this thing. Hallelujah. They're all, they're all to bring us to our knees so that we can pray prayers that will bring the fire of God. Hallelujah. And it says, Elijah was a man of like passion like we are. In other words, say, Elijah wasn't no supernatural being. He wasn't like Jesus. Hallelujah. He was a man just like you and me. He was human just like us. So that tells me we can pray prayers that will bring the supernatural fire of God. If Elijah did it, you can do it too, my daughter. You can do it too, my sister. You can do it too, my brother. Hallelujah. All we got to do is follow these principles and believe God and expect, hallelujah, for God to send fire when we pray. Glory to God. The Bible says he prayed for this, and the earth uh, did not rain for space of six months. In verse 18, say he prayed again and heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Hallelujah. In other words, prosperity came because he prayed with power. He prayed with fervency. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then, folks, we got to learn to pray with some fervency. We got to pray, pray with some excitement. Pray with some intensity. Pray with some conviction. Glory to God. Pray with some impact. Pray with some oomph and some power. And I'll tell you, we'll back the devil up because the fire of God will fall when we pray. Because prayers will bring the seraphims from heaven and seraphims are the angels of fire that God will send when we pray and God will be glorified you see because Elijah prayed with such power and God sent fire upon his prayer God also sent rain 
and prosperity for Elijah because he prayed with such an intensity. Can you say amen to that? Okay, I want us to look at one more. I want us to look at Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We're talking about prayers that will bring the fire of God, prayers that will open the portals of heaven, folks, because this is how we will get the conditions right for God to pour out his fire and pour out his glory in our midst. We've got to have to have that unity with God, unity with each other, and I believe that God is going to send glory and fire upon our prayer because we're going to pray prayers that's going to produce and open this open heaven over us and God's going to get the glory. The devil's going to be defeated and victory is going to be manifested for you. Breakthroughs are coming in the name of Jesus into your life in Jesus' name. Now, 2 Chronicles 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, one of my favorite Old Testament passages, 2 Chronicles 20, because it shows how he, uh, Jehoshaphat got victory over three armies. How many of you ever felt like you're being attacked from all sides? Hallelujah. I want you to know the prayers of, a righteous, of, of the righteous will avail much, but we've got to do what these men did in the scriptures, and God will respond favorably, and he will answer our cry, send fire from heaven, and send help from the sanctuary, and strength out of Zion. Can you say amen to that? Glory to God. In the time in which we live, folks, in these perilous times, prayer is our greatest weapon. And we must know how to pray prayers that will bring the fire of God and open the portals of healing, deliverance, prosperity, protection, and all that God has promised through Jesus Christ in the abundant life. We can pray prayers that will open these portals and God will send the blessings of God that make rich and had no sorrow and will be victorious over the enemy. Now, 2 Chronicles 20, the story of, of Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat, who was king over Judah. Hallelujah. He was king over Judah. Judah means praise. But I want you to know praise was under attack. Hallelujah. I want you to know praise is always under attack because the enemy always wants to try to infiltrate the praise with deception, infiltrate the praise with division. He wants to always try to infiltrate the praise so he can block it and stop it. And God can't move through the praise of his people. Judah was under attack. Hallelujah. Your prayers, your praise is always under attack. Your worship is always under attack. That means our prayer is always under attack from the enemy. But we declare victory over the devil and over the enemy who would attack our prayer, our worship, and our praise. Now, Jehoshaphat, he had some, some characteristics in his life that caused God to respond to his prayer. And that's what we're going to look at. And, and, and I'll begin with verse 1. Uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1 talking about prayers that will bring response prayers that will bring fire from heaven and god's going to be glorified verse 1 of chapter 20 and it came to pass after this also that the children of moab and the children of ammon with the with them also other beside besides the ammonites came against jehoshaphat to battle then there came some that told jehoshaphat saying there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria and beyond, and be and behold, they be in Hazon Tamar, which is in Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Now I want you to see what Jehoshaphat did here. First, he feared. Number one, he feared God. He reverently respect God. But at the same time, as he had the fear of God, he was kind of afraid of these three armies that were coming against him. But I believe first he had the fear of God because what he did after he got the message. You see, because Jezebel will always send you a messenger to try to bring fear into your life. But we must not give in to Jezebel's messenger. Hallelujah. We must defy that and say, I trust God and God will deliver me. And then Jehoshaphat did what he needed to do to turn back the spirit of, of ungodly fear because he had the fear of the Lord. The Bible says he feared and he set himself to seek the Lord after this, to pray and to proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. In other words, Jehoshaphat called a fast. I said he called a fast. Hallelujah. We need to call a fast. We need to call a fast personally in our personal lives. We need to live a fasted lifestyle. If you call a fast in your life, It'll give power to your prayer. Fasting puts power to prayer. You say, what's fasting? 
fasting is to deny ourselves physical food for spiritual purposes. If we can shut ourselves down and not eat so much or eat at our regular designated time, it will cause our spirit man to grow. It's cause our spirit man to be strong and a rule over our soul and our flesh man and it will deliver us from fear. Jehoshaphat fear and he called a fast. He's called a fast throughout all, all Judah and the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. In other words, they came to seek the Lord. They didn't run off into fear. They didn't get scared and run away from God. They, they, they came together to seek God because they knew that only God could deliver them. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Jerusalem, verse 5, and the house of the Lord before the new court. Now here, not only did Jehoshaphat call a fast, Jehoshaphat went into prayer. Jehoshaphat went into corporate public prayer. Hallelujah. In other words, he prayed publicly. One of the signs of a real prayer warrior is one who can pray publicly. He prayed before the house of the Lord, before the whole congregation, he prayed. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And thou rulest, and rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might that none shall be able to withstand thee? In other words, Jehoshaphat stood first and declared the power of God over all the, every army that was coming against him. You must declare the power of God over that sickness. You must declare the, God, the power of God over that whatever is attacking your household, whatever is attacking your life, your mind, your soul, your body. You must declare that God's power is greater than that thing or those people or whoever it is that's coming against you. He declared God's power to be greater. He declared God's power to be greater. He, he said, and not, and he said art, not thou God, art not thou our God? who did drive out the inhabitants of the land before the people of Israel and gave it into the seed of Abraham thy friend. And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary in therein thy, uh, 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 therein for thy name, saying, when evil come upon us as sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, I'm at verse nine here, we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house and we cry out to thee in our affliction then thou will hear and help. In other words, they decree, they declare, they, right now he's praying prophetically. He's praying prophetic, uh, 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 prophetic declaration. He said, Lord, you will hear us, you will hear us, and you will send help. In other words, he declared, he didn't ask, he said, God, you said you will send help when we cry out to you in prayer. In other words, he prayed uh, a decree. Did Job 22, 28 say, we shall decree a thing? And and, 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 and and God will establish us and light will shine on our ways. In other words, that portal will shine on our ways when we make prayers of declaration and prayers of decree. Praying prophetically brings the power and the light portal of God. Hallelujah. That's what Jehoshaphat prayed. That's how he prayed. He prayed prayers of declaration. Prayed prayers of decree. In other words, declaring the promises of God, folks. That's what we must declare, what God has already promised us in his word. And God will always honor his word. And he continues to pray here with verse number 10. He said, and now, uh, and now behold the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldst not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but that they turned, but that they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to cast to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou has given to us to inherit. In other words, Jehoshaphat said, God, they're trying to take the possession you gave to us. They're trying to take it away from us. You see, because God has already given, God has given us good health. God has given us prosperity. He's given us wealth. He's given us a sound mind. Hallelujah. He's given us a sober heart. He's given us a heart after God. And the enemy wants to destroy that with worry and evil imaginations and fear and doubt and depression and distraction and all this stuff. The enemy wants to take away what God has given us, folks. But we defy that and we come against him with prayer. Glory to God. Prayer that will bring fire. Glory to God. Okay. And he says in verse 12, uh, oh, oh, our God, will not thou judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. You see, sometimes we're just outnumbered. We're over, we're out, overpowered. He said, well, against this company, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. In other words, we, we must say that God, our focus is not on our problem, not on our situation, God, but my eyes are on you. 
I said, when I don't know what to do, Lord, my eyes are on you. Glory to God. And that's what we must focus in on, on, on the Lord who can bring us through. Focus in on doing our part. You see, because when this move of God is coming, you know, we can focus in all many directions, but we need to be focusing on doing our part. Jehoshaphat did his part. He was focusing on doing our, his part. What was his part? Fast and pray. Call a fast. Call a congregation of fast and a congregation of prayer. And God responded. He said, we don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Whenever we don't know what to do, let our eyes be on the king. Hallelujah. Okay, so when the Jehoshaphat got done praying, God sent a prophetic word of instruction through the prophet Jehaziel. Hallelujah. And Jehaziel said some things that are very important. Uh, hallelujah. And, and the Bible said, uh, then, then upon Jehaziel, looking at verse 14, 2 Chronicles 20, 14, upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, this is what the prophetic instruction was. And folks, prayer will bring a prophetic instruction and prophetic utterance. Hallelujah. Prayer activates prophecy. Prayer activates the prophet's office. Glory to God. And here we see the prophet's office operating along with prophecy. Okay. Uh, and, he hearken, and, he, and he said, Jehaziel said, verse 14, verse 15. He said, hearken unto me, all J Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and, ye, and thou king Jehoshaphat. In other words, he's saying, here, Harvest Center. He said, and all, in, all inhabitants of, the, of, of, of Harvest Center, and you too, Apostle Rufus, hallelujah. Otherwise, he, he prophesied to the leader. Glory to God. He said, you too, uh, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor be dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. He said, the battle is not yours, but God's. He first, he told him, listen, don't be afraid. Don't let fear get into you. Don't you get into fear. Hallelujah. You get into faith and fear will get out of you. He said, don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. In other words, don't be discouraged. Hallelujah. Why? He says, because the battle is not yours, but it's God's. I'm here tonight to tell you, my friend, that the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. All you got to do is trust him and obey because there's no other way to be victorious in Jesus than to trust and obey because the battle's not ours, folks. It's the Lord's. I said the battle's not yours, but it's God's. You got to declare that the battle is not mine, but it belongs to the Lord. That's a word of prophecy. That's an exhortation. Hallelujah. That's, a, that's, that's edification, exhortation and, 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 and comfort. Then he gives them instruction. He gives them some instruction. He says that in verse number 16, he said, Tomorrow go you out against them. Behold, they come up by the way of the cliff of Ziz. You shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. Jerel. He said, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Jerusalem and O Judah. Fear not nor be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. I said, the Lord will be with you. You have to be willing to face the opposition. The only way to get victory over something is to face it. Hallelujah. The only way to get victory over something is to, that's what your freedom is to do it. Hallelujah. You're afraid of flying on an airplane. The only way you're going to get victory, you got to book a flight. Hallelujah. You got to get you a ticket and you got to get on that plane. Amen. Hallelujah. Once you fly on that plane, fear is gone. Hallelujah, you'll be flying ever since. Hallelujah, glory to God. Because he told him, don't fear, nor be dismayed. He said, for the Lord will be with you. Hallelujah, get on the plane. The Lord will be with you. Hallelujah, come to, come to in-person service. The Lord will be with you. Get rid of the fear. And, 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 and the words of the prophet caused Jehoshaphat to bow and to worship. Verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed his head and with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And, and the Bible says here, I pick it up with verse number, pick it up with verse number 19. And they rose early in the morning and went into the valley of the wilderness, into the wilderness uh, of Tekoa. And they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood, as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets. And so shall you prosper. You see, a lot of people are not 
prospering because they're not believing in God and they're not believing in his prophets. They're believing the prophets of Baal. They're believing the prophets of religion and there's no prosperity. The voice that speaks into your life is very important. So you got to hear the right voice. You got to believe the right voice. You got to place yourself under the right covering, under the right, uh, under the right anointing. And God said, God says you'll prosper and you'll be established. That's what Jehoshaphat prophesied to the people. And the Bible says when they had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, they say, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And, and as they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments that were angels were sent from heaven. Angels of fire came from heaven. Ambushments to ambush the three armies. Verse 22, as they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come out against Judah. And they were smitten. And the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, everyone helped to destroy another. In other words, the enemy attacked one another. Instead of attacking them, the enemy attacked each other. God sent a spirit of confusion on the enemy. Hallelujah. He's going to send confusion on that spirit of infirmity. Hallelujah. And infirmity is going to attack sickness. A sickness is going to attack disease. And a, and a disease is going, going to attack prescription drugs. And they're going to destroy one another. And we're going to be free and be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm declaring that for you tonight. Okay. So the children of Ammon stood against the inhabitants of Syria to utterly destroy and to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, everyone helped to destroy one another. Okay. So now we see as a result of Jehoshaphat's prayer, he got rid of fear. He was humble because he fasted. He led the people into fasting and prayer. He believed God, hallelujah. He was willing to go out, hallelujah, and face the opposition, face the trouble head up, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. And this is what we got to do. We got to face it head up in the name of Jesus. Don't hide, don't run from it. Hallelujah, face this thing because the Lord will be with you. Hallelujah, and you won't need to fight because the battle is the Lord. I said the battle is the Lord. Oh, I got to say this again. I said the battle is the Lord. And he's going to deliver you. Matter of fact, he's already delivered you. You just got to go through the process. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And prayer is a part of the process. Glory to God. Fasting is a part of the process. Getting rid of fear is part of the process. God's going to be glorified. And not only did the enemy got destroyed because their prayer brought angels of fire from heaven. They came in the abundance of financial wealth that they never had before. I want you to know prayers that bring fire will be prayers that will bring financial abundance and prayers that will bring wealth into your hand. Prayer that will bring wealth into our situation. And God's going to be glorified. Look at this. Verse number 24. The Bible says that when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth. And none escaped. <coughs> Glory to God. Excuse me. And none of them escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away the spoils, they came to take away the spoils. Folks, we're about to take away the spoils. We're about to take away the wealth of the wicked. It's about to be turned over to the just. Hallelujah. Because we're going to line up with God. Hallelujah. We're going to do our party in prayer. We're going to do our part in fasting. We're going to do our part in obedience. The Bible said they came to take away the spoils and found them among them in abundance, both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. Didn't he say he'll open the windows of heaven and pour us out our blessing? We won't have room enough to receive. Hallelujah. If we would give and follow God's instruction. Hallelujah. More than they could carry away. Are you ready for more than you can carry away? More than you got place to put the, the wealth and the abundance. More than they could carry away. That there were three days, come on, three days in gathering in the spoils. It was so much. 
Why? Because Jehoshaphat prayed prayers that got a response that opened the portals of protection that caused the angels of warfare and fire to come. Because those seraphims, they are angels of warfare. Cherubims are angels of warfare. His prayers brought angels of fire into his situation. And folks, if we line up with God, we can pray and God will send fire from heaven and angels will come and deliver us, set us free, and the blessing and the rain will come. Hallelujah. Just like it came for Elijah, they got the rain. Hallelujah. After the fire. Hallelujah. The rain of prosperity came as they were able to take away the spoils of the wicked. Three days, it was so much. They didn't have place to put it. They could not take it away because it was so much. Why? Because God blessed his people. Because they were in accord with God. The righteous standing of Jehoshaphat stood as a significant part of his life. And God honored him by sending fire from heaven through the angels of the Lord that sent ambushments to take the enemy by surprise. And God will do it for us. Because if we line up with God, he says, our adversary will be his adversary. Our enemies would be his enemies. And we will take the spoils of the wicked. Folks, there's about to be a tremendous wealth transfer into the kingdom of God. And we don't want to miss that. We want to be a part of that. Because the wealth of the wicked is about to be turned over to the righteous. Because the prayers of the righteous will bring the fire. The prayers of the righteous will avail much. Are you willing? to say yes to God, to line up with His will in your prayer life, in corporate prayer and in personal prayer, along with fasting, along with expectation that God's going to hear your prayer and He will respond favorably as He did for Jehoshaphat, as He did for Solomon, as He did for the prophet Elijah, and as, we, as He did in the life of David and the life of many other disciples and saints who prayed prayers that brought the fire of God as he did in the life of the first church in the book of Acts. Their prayers brought fire from heaven. My prayer is that you will begin to pray prayers that will cause God to respond with supernatural operations and supernatural actions begin to happen as a result of your prayer. I'm talking about healing for those that are sick. I'm talking about creative miracles to, put, to produce limbs that have been amputated, limbs that have been severed through accident, are about to be recreated through the prayers that will produce the fire of God and for prayers that will bring the angels from heaven. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you ready? Are you expecting? Do you believe tonight? Hallelujah. And God's going to be glorified. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for each one that will take the time to listen tonight. And Lord, I pray that my words tonight has released the fire of heaven into their life and into their situation. And Father, I pray right now, Father, that the angels begin to intensify themselves with us, God. Oh God, that we will meet your conditions so that you will send fire from heaven in our midst, in our personal life, and in our corporate church setting, that the glory of the Lord will fill the house of God and the glory of the Lord will be seen in the clouds you will be glorified. Father, we declare victory and power to be released through your spoken word tonight. For you sent your word to heal us and to deliver us from destruction. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray the impartation of the spirit of prayer, the spirit of fire, the anointing for prayer that will cause us to pray with the fire that will produce the supernatural works of God in our lives and in the lives of many others. We give you thanks for each one that have listened each one that will listen, Father, and will take heed to the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, I speak blessings and favor over you tonight through your prayer life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to ask him into your heart tonight. Ask him into your heart, repenting of your sins, making a decision. You're going to forsake the old life. You're going to leave it behind. You're going to start a new life and a new beginning in Jesus Christ and living for him and serving him by repenting, asking God to forgive you putting away the sin, the unrighteousness, the wickedness, sexual sin, unrighteousness, profanity. God can deliver you from those things. But first, you must turn to Jesus Christ because he is the main portal that produces all other portals 
is Jesus Christ. We need him because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the master portal that produced all other portals that we need in our life today. Receive Jesus Christ. Repent. Make a decision that you're going to serve him. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire because you can't live this life without the Holy Ghost and fire. And I'm going to pray that for somebody right now tonight. Receive the fresh filling of the Holy Ghost and fire. Receive your initial filling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. In Jesus' name, I'm talking to that Baptist pastor tonight. I'm talking to that Baptist sister tonight. In the name of Jesus, be filled with the Holy Ghost. May the fire of God come into your life in Jesus' name. And may the manifestation of tongues and the prayer language start in you. In Jesus' name. The way you know it, that you will hear the tongues inside your conscience and your in your mind first. You hear the utterance first inside you. Speak that out of your mouth. And that's the river of tongues and the gifts of the Spirit beginning to operate in your life. You hear it inside you first. Speak it out of your mouth. And then the river and the fire of God will be in your life. You too will be a burning lamp in these last days. Hallelujah. You'll be a burning lamp for the kingdom of God. And that's what he's called us to be. Torches in these last days. Light for this dark world. Hallelujah. But it takes the fire of God and us to desire the fire. Hallelujah. And desire more of the fire of God. And our prayers will produce fire that will produce the supernatural in our life and the lives of many others. May the Lord bless you tonight. Hope you got something out of this. I believe some of you got a healing in your body. Hallelujah. If you got a healing, I'll put it in the chat. You got a healing. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, put it in the chat that I got saved. I accepted the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Put it in the chat. You'll begin to prophesy. You'll begin to testify of the wonderful works of God. May the Lord bless you. Until the next broadcast, until the next video, keep listening. Got some more information on prayer and some more, more information on open heaven and the portals that open to heaven. In Jesus' name, we love you. Keep yourself safe. Keep yourself strong. Stay in prayer. Stay in the secret place. And God will bless you. In Jesus' name.